Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce the elastic curve equation and then talk about how we can use it to solve for displacement and slope of beams at any point. I'm going to do it in general terms in this video, and then the next couple videos we'll do exact examples. So to get started, let's remember what we were talking about with pure bending. We had this expression where we have 1 over rho is equal to m over ei. And this basically just comes from um, if we had this typical member, let's say it's a beam, and we're applying only pure bending to it, so it'll look something like this, where we'll have an externally applied moment on each end. Well, if we draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, we're going to see that we get that constant internal moment. Now, if we consider another type of, of structure, let's say we have a, uh, let's say a cantilever beam like this, uh, with a fixed rigid connection to some some wall so we'll just shade it in like that all right and uh, let's say that we are applying just a single point load uh, at the end well we're gonna find that we get a non-zero shear force diagram and then a bending moment diagram is going to reveal that our bending moment is actually changing along the length of the beam so in this case with a point load on a cantilever beam the expression for our moment as X increases basically as we go left from right uh, we're gonna say that the moment uh, in terms of x is equal to negative p times x, right? So when, when x equals l, that's why we're getting that negative p l there basically at that support. So this is pretty much the case where, um, where any time where we're having transverse loads, basically, uh, you know, just perpendicular to the, the member that we're looking at, so any type of point loads or um, distributed loads and that sort of thing, um, we're going to be having to take an account for that, that the radius of curvature is, uh, is well, this the, actually that the moment is not constant along the length, and so the radius of curvature expression has to be slightly adjusted, so we'll say that radius of curvature is just equal to the expression for the moment in terms of x uh, over ei. All right, and it also turns out that one over rho, one over the radius of curvature, also happens to be equal to the second derivative of y. So we would say d y or d squared y over d x squared. And basically, when we're talking about the second derivative of y, um, well, let's actually define some of the things that are that we're saying in here because this that I'm going to circle here in green. This is the basis for the, all of these problems where we're solving for slope and deflection. So to get started, um, EI here is the flexural rigidity. This thing here is just the second derivative of Y. And Y is, uh, is basically the vertical displacement of the loaded structure from its undeformed position. And we're also going to need the intermediate step between Y and its second derivative. Uh, so we'll be looking for just DY DX, just the first derivative of y and uh, as you know that is basically just the slope uh, and we can write that as tan theta or using the small angle approximation we can just call that theta. So basically what we want to do is we'll be able to, given, given the type of uh, structure and loading that we have, we'll be able to find out what our moment in terms of x is like in this case um, and then all we need to do is we just need to integrate this expression twice to be able to find out what y is, and that will reveal us, uh, we can set y equal to the, the rest of the expression that we get, and, and that will give us basically the position of the deformed structure at any, any, any value of x. And then we can also, we can, just, uh, we can just take the derivative of that and find out what the slope is, because once this bends down a little bit, they'll have different amounts of slope that are changing. Uh, basically, the radius of curvature will be changing as we go along, uh, you know, progress as we go down the length of the member. So quickly, just looking at what that double integration looks like, um, we're going to basically have, we have m of x, and uh, we can just bring up the ei onto the other side. So we'll have ei, and then that dy, uh, d squared y over dx squared. So basically what we want to do is we want to integrate this uh, each side from 0 to x, and this is a constant ei, so we'll just throw that in, 0 to x. Uh, this will return us, we got to throw in little dx things there uh, to be all proper. So we're going to just leave this left-hand side the same as it is. So we'll have from 0 to x, we have mx dx. The integral of the second derivative will just be the first derivative. So we have ei times
times dy dx. Um, and then we'll, we'll have an integration constant left over from all of this stuff. So we'll just call that c1. All right, so there we did. We just did the first integral. Um, we can also rewrite this knowing that dy dx is, uh, is going to be equal to theta, uh, the slope. So we'll just, uh, I'll just rewrite that here. So we'll just get rid of dy dx. We can write this in as theta, right? And we're saying that up here, dy dx is equal to theta. And this expression becomes super important for us because uh, we're going to have, uh, I'll show you in a second, we're going to be using boundary conditions to figure out what the constant is. And then the rest of this will just be in uh, terms of x and y, and we'll be able to solve for, uh, for this type of thing. Um, bear with me for one second. The next thing that we want to do here is we want to keep integrating. We want to integrate this again once more. Uh, but we just want to make note that that is a super important expression. So we're going to integrate the side again. So we have from 0 to x, mx dx. And we want to integrate that again, doing a second integration. Um, and then we want to integrate this stuff. So ei times the integral of, well, here we can write it out, ei times the integral of dx dy plus the integral from 0, uh, that's dx, uh, 0 to x times, this is a constant, so we can actually bring the constant out of that integration, and this will just be dx, and uh, when we go and solve for this, basically it's just going to look like this, we'll have 0 to x, the integral 0 to x of dx times the integral of 0 to x mx dx is going to be equal to that constant ei times, well, the integral of the derivative is just going to leave us with y. Um, and then the c1x, so that will just be c1x, and then we're going to have a second integration constant c2. So this is also going to be a key equation for us when we're solving for when we want to find out what the expression for y is. So basically we rearrange this one to give us an expression for y. Um, and then we rearrange this one to give us an expression for theta. And that will, so the, the y one will give us basically the, the position of the deformed structure at any point. And this one will give us the slope of the uh, the different slopes along the length of that beam at any point. But the problem is we do have some unknowns in here. We have these integration constants. So basically this is an incomplete solution. So basically um, because this is a differential equation, um, we're going to be using our boundary conditions to be able to solve what these constants are and then we'll have no unknowns in these expressions. And I'll just give you an example here of what some boundary conditions would be for typical problems like this. So in the case of a simply supported beam with a constant distributed, uh, distributed load on it, we know that yeah, in the middle, once we apply this load, it's going to be flexing down and we'll get some slopes in here and we'll actually get some vertical displacement of that beam. Um, but we know right at the reactions, because these are, uh, these are you know, fixed to the earth, right? They're not moving. Um, and same over here, and you get the point. These are all uh, fixed to some reference standard that we're taking our deflections off of. So that one is fixed to the earth and, and like that. Um, so we'll just change the color here maybe. We know that in this case, so at x equals 0, right, if um, x is going this way, um, at x equals 0, the displacement at a, and you know what, I should probably also label in, call that a, b. Um, so at x equals 0, the displacement at y or the deflection at y is going to be zero because this isn't getting pushed into the ground, right? It's staying put. Here also at x equals l, we're saying that the displacement y, uh, so the displacement at b, sorry, yb, is going to also be equal to zero because it's not going into the ground. It's staying exactly where it is. And these two sets of boundary conditions fix this. So we put in like x equals zero, and then we'd also set the y's uh, to be zero. Um, that would actually give us one of the integration constants. And then we'd do the same thing. We'd plug in all the x's equal to l and all the y's equal to 0. And uh, that would give us the other integration constant. And then we'd be able to uh, work back, plug that stuff 
back into here because we would know C1 and then we'd be able to find like the slope at each, you know, at any point and then we wouldn't have these unknowns anywhere. So it's a little hard to kind of visualize what that is without having done one with a real problem yet, but I just want to show you this so hopefully by the next videos you kind of see what's going on here. Um, in the case of like uh, the example from this video for a cantilever with a point load, the boundary conditions that we can work with are we know that at x equals l uh, the displacement of the beam at B is going to be zero. And the other thing that we know is that at X equals L, the slope is going to be zero because it's a fixed connection. So whatever angle that is to begin with, it doesn't. we just assume that it doesn't actually get uh, deformed right at the connection. So in this case, when we're using our boundary conditions, we would have to plug in into this expression. Um, we would set all the X's equal to L and all the Y's equal to zero. And then we'd solve for uh, whatever we can. And then we'd plug in, because we have a theta here, we'd have to use this expression. So whatever our expression is with the x's, we'd set the x's equal to L, and then the theta is equal to zero, and then we'd get that other C1, and then we'd be able to solve those um, and, uh, and get actual expressions with no unknown integration constants. So again, you'll see these in the next couple of videos. And these last two are a little bit more complicated. Um, each span is that has a continuous moment is going to give us two integration constants. Uh, and as we cross point C, we're actually going to be getting a discontinuous moment uh, expression. So we have to do two sets. We'll actually end up getting four integration constants using four boundary conditions. Um, and those, so these ones are a little bit harder and we will do these also in future videos. So hopefully that was a, a decent introduction to the concept. And uh, join me in the next video and we'll actually put some real numbers to one of these problems and we'll, you'll, it'll be easier to understand what's going on once you see it, uh, not in uh, as general of terms.